We're talking Auburn football on this live edition of the Uptempo Podcast. You are now listening to the War Report Podcast Network. Let's go. What's up, Auburn family? What's up, Up Tempo gang? Dustin and Blake here with you like we are every Tuesday night, man. Here to talk some Auburn football. Blake, they're going to be in that stadium Saturday. They're going to put on their helmets and pads. And I hope that somebody's hitting somebody, man. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing great. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, I, I'm I'm doing great. I am excited for a day. Uh, Auburn football is back. Jordan Hare Stadium is going to be open and uh, to the public, and Cam Coleman will be officially an Auburn Tiger. So, uh, like I said, man, uh, I think it's going to be really fun for the Auburn family to come back together. Like we said, we got Tennessee and baseball right across the street after A Day. I think it's going to be a fun weekend in Auburn. Yeah, absolutely, man. I see a lot of people in the comments talking about how they're going to be able to go and all that. Blake thought I was going to be able to make it, man. Unfortunately, I'm not. I had a uh, vacation planned already next week, so it's just going to be too much to try to get the animals watched, get the funds, you know, get the money up for hotels for a whole week, going to Auburn, then get yep. down to Tampa. A little too much, man. But I will be doing pre and post game over on the War Report. Uh, so, you know, you guys tap in and, and uh, Blake, I know that you're planning on going out there, right? So, um, it's going to be a good, be a big weekend, man. We got a, a must win series on the baseball diamond. Like, gotta, gotta take two out of three. I see our guy Danny here is in the comments. He's here with us every show. He says, Who all is going to the Tennessee this game this weekend? You guys tap it in the comments, man, and uh, let us know that you will all be going to the Plains. And Miller, gonna get us started off right here. Miller says, I'm hoping to see some deep shots down the field during a day. And they had a press conference today. And I'm going to be honest with y'all. I watched it and I thought it was just um, very coach speakish, which is not something that Hugh Freeze has really had a whole lot of at his time at Auburn. So I didn't really think there was really anything to cut up for us to play the night. He just kind of gave standard answers. But he was asked about this, Miller. And, um, and then Chris brings up a point here. He said it's going to be kind of tough because – a lot of the receivers are banged up. Apparently, Caleb Burton's banged up. Jay Fair's banged up. Camden Brown's banged up. Um, I'm missing somebody else. Corey Moore's banged up. So it's gonna be it's gonna be a challenge. And but I'm with you. I'm with you guys, Miller, in saying that you want to see this thing aired out because we know that those guys back there toting the rock can can run the rock. And Blake, you know, two weeks ago, man me and you kind of talked about how we thought that Jeremiah Cobb was really going to take off next season. And I, I know that you're not backing off of that and I'm not either, but i tell you somebody who must've heard us talking was Damari Austin mm. because every, every article I read about updates and any, anytime I text somebody and say, Hey man, what do you, you know, what'd you see? Damari had a big run. Oh, I tell you who had a bunch of big runs today was Damari Austin. Guess mm. who had a big touchdown run in the scrimmage Saturday, Damari Austin. So, just want to, you know, listen, it's going to be a nice uh, – that'll be a fun battle to watch right there at RB2, man, because I got all the belief in Jeremiah Cobb, but it sounds like Jer uh, Damari's having a strong camp break. I'll tell you about the wide receivers, Dustin, and and I'll start there. Is I really wish this is when uh, Perry Thompson was on campus. Mm -hmm. And I just uh, – and even – even Malcolm Simmons, you know, I, I wish both of those guys were able to be there this weekend because of stuff like this, just getting that extra work and that preparation and being able to work and like Bryce Kane being there. I think this is going to be a big weekend for him. Uh, I, the receivers being banged up like Jay Fair being banged up. Uh, Bryce Kane could slide in there and get some get some solid work. So uh, I am excited about that part. I, I do want to see shots down the field. I want to see us open it up. I know Hugh talks about uh, not really wanting to show a whole lot and, and all of that stuff. So, um, yeah, it, when it comes to running back, man, um, Damari, look, get after it. Get after it and uh, and, and grind, you know. I, I'm, I'm big on Jeremiah. Uh, I think he is going to show out this year. I think he's an all-around back. But if Damari can take that role and run with it, grind, brother grind and, and get in there uh jarquez we know what he's capable of we know what he can do 
Uh, but I, I think it's a deep room. I think it's a deep room, and, and I want to see all three. And we still got Petit. We still got Petit. So, uh, you know, he can return kicks. I think he's got to get a little bit better. There was some ball security problems last year, at the end of the year especially. So, I, like I said last week, I think we have to take this serious. And I think we have to come out and be ready to play. I know you're playing your own people. You're playing your own team. And I know it's a control a controlled scrimmage. But we got to be serious, man, and we got to take this thing because everybody else around the conference, they're taking it serious. We got to get back to Auburn football. And we got to get back to winning. So right now is the time. Saturday is that opportunity, Dustin. Yeah, and me and you were talking before we hit record. It's kind of funny. When I think back to the two most hype A-Days I've been to, 2010 and 2013. Now, 2013 has something attached to it because of your last tumor's role and kind of everything going on with that. But still, you had 70-plus thousand people at both those A-Days, if I remember correctly, and you went on to win a national championship in one and, and play for another. And, you know, the road to having that kind of season doesn't start in August. It starts yep. right now. So yeah, I do I do hope that um I do hope that it is being taken seriously. It'll be, you know, it'll be interesting to see because you kind of have the built in excuse last year with them playing in a hurricane to not take it seriously and only yeah. ended up playing three quarters. So I want to see this year. Should maybe all the weather updates I've seen, that's not gonna be an issue. You're gonna be able to play some football. So yeah, man, I want to see uh I want to see Holden Gurner and I want to see Hank Brown mm. air the ball out ten times a piece. And let's see what's what. Because it sounds like, man, Hugh said it again in the press conference today. He, he keeps using the term that Peyton Thorne is in the pole position. I mean, he's in the pole position, and then the, there's not, you know, there's a couple empty spots. That's the way. I mean, he's just – he's so far ahead. Like, he's got it locked up. So, um, and how much are you really going to learn about a three-year power five starter in a spring game? Mm. Now, now, I mean, you have talked about, and I stand by, not a whole lot Peyton Thorne can gain other than like the yep. confidence of the fan base. But if he comes out and goes 10 for 12, people will still say, well, it's spring game. But if he goes three for nine, mm -hmm. that's problematic. So that's kind of, that's where I'm looking at Peyton Thorne. But to me, Blake, as far as QBs go, if Hank Brown comes out and has a day, brother, I know our guy Charlie five dropped this episode earlier of top button saying he thinks that Hank Brown's making moves in that QB room. Um, he didn't say, you know, taking past PT or nothing. But if Hank Brown comes out and has that day, man, he's going to be your backup. And then your philosophy, your, your theory of hold and transfer, and I think comes true at the second portal time. Yeah. And if, if Hank comes out and <clears throat> if Hank comes out and has a day, then like you said, Peyton comes out and, and he, he kind of doesn't perform up to what we think uh, he should, then that's going to start a lot of, a lot of bickering amongst the fan base, right? Is it Peyton Thorne? Is it Hank Brown? You know, so you really want Peyton to come out and have a day. Uh, and, and I'm not saying for Hank to have a bad day or, you know, not the day that we expect or whatever. But you want to see Peyton come out and be successful because everybody I know, all right, I know what happened last year with Peyton and all the criticism he got and everything. I understand that. But moving forward, we want a QB1 now so we can start working and getting better as a football team. Like Dustin said, this thing don't start in August. You don't win in August. You win right now. Championships are won right now. So we need a QB1. And the way our head coach is speaking is Peyton Thorne's on the pole. And it's, it's a nice little distance. All right, he's up a nice little distance. So – you really want him to come out and take take the grasp and say, hey, I, I got it under control. I'm the guy. Let's move forward. Let's stop all the quarterback talk, and let's move forward as one as our quarterback. And th that's the whole reason I wanted the bowl game, Dustin. That's the whole reason I wanted the bowl game to work in our favor. I wanted PT to come out and have a day in the bowl game so we wouldn't be here right now. We wouldn't be in this discussion. It would be Peyton Thorns the starter. We're moving to A Day. He's gonna come out. He's gonna throw it around the yard a little bit. He's gonna get out of there healthy. And we're gonna move on to the season as Peyton Thorne is our number one quarterback. And it didn't work out like that. That's the reason I say you gotta take this thing serious, is because you didn't take the bowl game serious. Mm. 
And Dustin let you know it the night before. He said, hey, vibes are high. Next morning we wake up. <laughs> Dustin's at Tiger Walk, and he says, hey, vibes are not high. All right? <laughs> this isn't being taken serious. Yeah. Dustin let us know in the game day group chat. All right? He said, hey, something's up. Before we ever kicked off, and then bang, we're down 21 to nothing. And we were like, hey, Dustin, Dustin knew something. All right? So uh, that is why I want it to be taken serious. And I, I need PT to come out and have a day. And it's nothing against Holden, Dustin. It's, it's yeah. nothing. I think he's a great kid. I think he's a great talent. Uh, and if it does come to him being the, the third quarterback on the depth chart, uh, you know, and he, he decides to transfer, then I wish him the best. And because – the reason I think that is because you're really looking at Walker White, and I know everybody wants Walker to get in and play. It's just not going to happen this year. The only way I think it happens is if the season goes south, we lose to Cal or something, and somebody gets, somebody gets hurt, right. and then he's forced into the fire. All right, and I just – I don't think he needs to step on the field this year. Let the man learn. Let him get comfortable. Uh, because if you do throw him in there as a freshman, you're throwing him in there to Bo Nix territory. And you're asking him to go out there and perform as a freshman in the best conference in the country, and he's just not ready yet. So, PT, PT, PT. Got to have a day Saturday. Uh, yeah. Auburn Dad, he says he is looking for two good drives, scoring drives out of PT, and he needs to sit him. Hey, if PT comes out the gate, bang, bang, two touchdown drives yeah. and he's out, I think everybody would feel pretty good, especially if it looked nice and clean. Um, our guy, Brett, is hanging in there like a hair on a biscuit. Well, you, hey, well, you hang in there, Brett. I'm pulling for you, baby. I'm pulling for you, buddy. You just hang in there. You'll be all right. Ten, 10 says, hey, that's wild. That's wild. <laughs> I love it, man. You guys are the best. Tim says that um, he's hearing that Bryce May redshirt. You know, yeah, this is a possibility. Um, I was leaning this way at first, and then you started hearing some stuff out of bowl practice about how Bryce was performing, and it's like, yeah, I don't know. Maybe he doesn't get redshirted. I think that if Bryce ends up redshirting, it's because – we're pretty good at slot. Like if we're, if we're anywhere at receiver, we feel okay at right now, it should be slot. I mean, you got, you got an experienced guy in Lewis coming from Georgia state. You got Jay fair. Like you got some guys in the slot that are some veteran guys that have made catches and played a lot of college ball. So, mm -hmm. and then now Tim with the red shirt rule, I can still get Bryce five games. So he can still get some looks, right? And and not cost him a year of eligibility. So um, yeah, yeah, maybe so, man. We'll see how it all plays out. It, uh, I think this one's kind of going to be up to injuries. If those guys are fun of him, and Caleb Burton's going to play some slot too. So there's another guy. They're going to move Caleb Burton around a little bit, but I think you know you're going to see him more inside than you will outside. If Cam Brown takes the next step, and we all know what Cam Coleman's got his spot already secured over there. What does Perry Thompson <laughs> do on the outside? Right, like so. You know, if Bryce does, Tim, I think it's a good thing because last year, the year before, the year before that, you would have been throwing screen passes to Bryce Brown. Or excuse me, Bryce Brown. Well, boy, we need shooters, don't we? Don't we need three-point shooters? Don't we need three-point shooters, boy? Come come back to us, Bryce Brown. Y'all, I'm, I'm still hurt. I'm still hurt. Bryce yeah. Kane. Bryce Kane. Um, there, in years previously – we would have been calling on Bryce Kane. We would have been depending on Bryce Kane to come in as a true freshman. They would have been telling you, boy, this kid's got speed. We're going to need him. We're going to need him, right? Like an Eli Stove. We needed to use his speed as a freshman. Mm -hmm. um, if he ends up red shirt and Tim, I would say it's a good thing because it doesn't necessarily mean that Bryce wasn't ready. It just means that yeah. you've actually got some options ahead of him and you can just kind of save him a year. But I'm going to stand by what I said the other night. I think that if the only receiver that red shirts out of this class will be Malcolm Simmons. And I'm not even 100% on that because he could get out there on that practice field and be a damn dog on special teams with his athletic ability. Um, and we might have to use him. But right now I still think that Bryce, uh, I think he plays 
in more games than five. I think he avoids a red shirt. Man, I'll tell you, when we saw him last fall over in Foley and he caught that slant and he split the safety in the corner, we both, Dustin and I both looked at each other. We just immediately, SEC speed. Like SEC speed, just left everybody 20, 30 yards, like gone. And I said, hey, that cat right there to only play football for two years, an absolute dog. I knew he was a dog at baseball. I saw the athletic ability in baseball. But when I see him get on that gridiron, that man is nasty. And the growth of the growth from his junior year to his senior year, he had trouble catching the football his junior year. Yeah. Like there was there was high school coaches in Mobile, they were like, hey, that's the biggest thing he's got to work on. He's got to get them hands sticky. Got to get them hands sticky. And there was a couple games where, where me and Dustin, we went to Baker and we watched him. And he was catching the ball in traffic, going up and getting it, like down the sideline. I mean, it was nasty. And it was just the strides that he kept making and making and making. I think he can see the field. And I was kind of on that fence with Dustin. Uh, I was kind of sitting there thinking, hey, he might red shirt. Uh, maybe. I'm not sure. And then I hear the updates. And I was like, man, I don't I don't think a red shirt is in his future. Because he's just going to be one of those guys where you got to get him the ball. You get your playmakers the ball in space, and I know he's going to be young and he's going to be a freshman, but his speed is elite. And when guys can move like that, you get them on the field, man. You put the ball in their hands and see what see what they can do, see if they can make a play. Because we always talk about on this podcast, one thing Auburn has been missing, you remember Ontario McCaleb? The jet sweep? Man, we, we, we miss that, where we can take one play and go 70 yards. Eli Stove, he was another good one. You brought him up. We missed that. We don't. We don't have that in our offense right now. Where we, we Auburn has to go 10, 12 plays, and then they stall out in the red zone, and they have to kick a field goal. What happened to three or four plays? Bang, seventy yards. Hmm. It's because you had an electric play. You had a guy. He he took the top off of the defense, and you hit that post, and and you score. We haven't had that. We've had it against Vanderbilt and stuff. But in big-time games, we ain't had that. And you remember that Ontario McCaleb jet sweep against LSU? Bang, to the crib. And it was like, hey, we're cooking. We're cooking, dog. Like, it, it, we we missed that. And we got to get Anthony Schwartz. That's another good one. I remember that. Uh, Texas A&M. I mean. You know, like, Terrell Zachary was not – he was not – this world beater out there at wide receiver, but he got behind defenses in big moments. Yep. Yep. He did. He did. Darius Slayton. Darius Slayton was another one. Uh, we we missed that. We got to get that back. Yeah, for sure. Outfielder, right, Blake? Bryce, an outfielder. <laughs> he is an outfielder, but he can also sling that pill on the bump. All right. Well, Pop, he, 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 can, he can pitch. Day. He can pitch. <laughs> he can. He might need to have a – Hugh and Butch might need to have a little conversation because <laughs> we ain't winning no football games in <laughs> April, Hugh. So, if that man can throw a heater and get three outs, I might he need can. at least hey, – I might need hey, a pin then, bro. Let me tell you all something about Bryce Kane. All right? They were playing Smith Station in the second round of the playoffs, right? So, kid from Smith Station just hits an absolute tank. I mean, I mean, he hits a piss rod out to left center. And I was like, oh, that's a bomb. All of a sudden, Bryce Kane comes out of nowhere. One one foot in the fence, goes up, huh? brings it back. And I was like, no way he caught that. Hmm. Flashes the glove, says, hey, I caught it. Next inning, coming in, throwing gas off the mound. And I was like, man, this dude is a star. Like, just an athlete, man. Ryan Davis, another one. They're filling up the comments, Dustin. Right. Ryan Davis. I, I, I'll never forget the move Ryan Davis uh, in the Iron Bowl, bro. That cut he had on the sideline. Mm-hmm. Oh, filthy, filthy. Dude was a yeah. stud. Yeah, for sure. Um, Miller says, talking about Malcolm, Malcolm Simmons saying Malcolm's tape is insane. His tape, man, was was just pops. I hate it. He was the only receiver that I didn't get to watch in the class this year, just kind of due to location and just timing didn't work out, being able to get up there and watch him. But – yeah, dude, unreal. And like I said, it, you watch that athleticism with Malcolm Simmons, and it's like, 
and he he might be a gunner. Like he might be a guy we have to use on punts, you know, kickoff, even on even on coverage, not just him returning it. Obviously, he gets the ball in his hands. He can do some some nasty things with it. But he's he's an athlete, so I don't ever want to count out a guy like that because those hidden yardages and special teams, man. I think we've learned over the last couple of years, especially in the Harson era, where the special teams was just atrocious. Like, boy, those yards add up. And you look up and you've got four penalties, 35 yards, and special teams. It's like, damn, man, in the game we lost by seven, you know. Can, can he field a punt? Can he catch one? Um. So, <laughs> I advocate for all-out block. I don't think that Auburn should worry about returning punts for the near future. I advocate for putting 11 on the line and just getting your offense to where field position doesn't matter, you can score. Because, sure, Auburn can field a punt until we have to. Yes. Until we have to. So, no, I don't ever want to see Auburn go back for a punt in a tie ball game or trailing or only up by whatever it is. You're close in the fourth quarter. No, sir. Send 11. If you don't get there, you'll be all right. Knox says, uh, are all receivers – or will all our receivers be available for 8 It didn't sound like it at the press conference today, man. Um, yep. He said he sounded. He said uh, Caleb Burton. He thought we would get Caleb back this week, and he said somebody else. I can't. He, his name slips my mind. One of the guys that was hurt. I think it was Coy. But um, I would be willing to bet. Man, listen, the Hugh, the the tone that Hugh took today, he didn't seem like he really gives a shit about Saturday. I'm just gonna be honest. And going off of what I saw last year, I don't think he cares. He sounded like he was kind of worried about putting anything on. And this is not a knock, right? Like I don't, you know. Um, but it sounded like he just. He kind of said, like, I don't want anybody to get hurt. I think he said his number one goal was to get out healthy. I guess the hell, you know, we're looking at it going, we want to see this guy do this and this guy do that. And he's like, I don't want y'all to see any of that. We're doing all that in practice behind closed doors. I just want to get out of here healthy. So him saying that alone, Knox, I think anybody that's remotely banged up, you're not going to see him. So I think a lot of those guys, uh, Jay Fairs, I I don't know how many of them you'll see. I think think you're going to see a lot of the young cats all over the field. I just don't think that maybe some of the new veterans, uh, it slips my mind, but the the kid, you got the Juco safety Robinson, and then you got the mm-hmm. one from Texas, right? Maybe guys like that who are new to the system and new to everything. And, and maybe more, more so on defense. As I say that I'm thinking Hughes installing his new offense too. I don't know, man, just going off the press conference today. I don't think you're going to see a whole lot of the starters and Hughes still doing that crap where he's saying we don't have starters. Like, Yes, you do. You know you do. Um, you know you have ones and twos, but it's coach speak. You know, and, and, and in today's era, when you're trying to keep everybody on the team as much as you can, like when he talked about quarterbacks, he was like, PT's in the pole position, but all the other guys are right behind him. No, they're not. Okay. Holden Gurner is not right behind Peyton Thorne, guys. Hughes trying to have enough quarterbacks to fill the team. And I don't listen to other SEC head coaches' press conferences too much but I would assume it would sound similar when talking about depth chart and positions in the spring because they're all petrified of losing 10, 12 guys that are still in the two deep. I mean, yeah. you think of last year, like Jeffrey Emba was was going to play reps and he didn't like the fact that he wasn't the first guy off the bench. Yep. And he went to Purdue. Gave up getting being in a solid rotation on the Auburn D line to go play at Purdue. So, you know, something to this, I think that Hugh's going to try to get a lot of guys involved. And I don't think you're going to see a whole lot of those veterans. And I just think that a lot of that, Knox, is going to be one about health, obviously, but two about trying to keep everybody happy, man. It's just um, these coaches right now are really in a tough spot trying to keep all these kids on the team, in the program, keep them happy, their parents happy, their uncle who's playing agent happy. Like, it's just – it's a crap That's show. A it, really, it really is. Um, That's Brett, a Reminding everybody, hit that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. After. We're right on the door yeah. at 1600, man. We're right, right there. So, if you are watching this and we got the analytics, some of you guys have been watching this for months and you haven't subbed to the channel yet. So, you can make it easier on yeah. yourself and it doesn't cost you a dime. Just hit that sub button and we appreciate you always supporting us, Brett. Now, all my dad coming in here with a good topic, Blake. This is something we can get on tonight. It looks like the dark ages are over, Blake. It looks like we're going to go to that swoosh, brother. Just kind of talk about Nike, Blake, and the impact you think it's going to have on this program, man. This is big, man. 
All right, so I'll start here with Nike. Is Nike controls the apparel game. I don't care how you how you want to slice it, dice it, look at it, whatever. Nike is number one when it comes to athletic apparel. You're with Under Armour right now. I know you got the money and you got the deal with Under Armour. I get all of that. But let's simply break it down. Let's let's push the money aspect to the side. All right. You sign with Nike or Jordan brand, either one. I think it's Nike. Everybody else thinks it's Nike. But man, like your your shoes get better. Your cleats get better. All right. Your your apparel gets better. We've heard it from numerous Auburn athletes. Hey, the Under Armour cleats, they're terrible. They're trash. Like, our feet hurt. We get blisters. Like, it's just, it's not good. You had tons of softball players last year come out and say, hey, like the gear that we get is not what it needs to be. And I'm telling you right now, no 18-year-old kid wants to wear Under Armour. When you go sit in a in a living room, all right, and you say, hey, we wear Under Armour, they're going to say, well, what about Jordan Brand and what about Nike? You literally hear it from a basketball recruit right now. Like, people are saying that that's his biggest thing about coming to Auburn. Is, will Auburn be a Nike apparel? Like, like, will they sign with Nike? That's the one thing he's waiting on. He's like, hey, I want to see it. Yeah, speaking about so. Yes, like, like, man, do you really think, like, look at the shoes we wear in basketball, dog. Do you really think, that's why it's so, like, I know Bruce gets athletes. I know he he recruits at a high level, but it's that much harder, man. Have you seen the boxes that we give out to our former, uh, our <laughs> former players? Like, yeah. We sent our NFL guys boxes before the season, and all their teammates are opening up their stuff from Nike, and they're just like, oh, dang, look at this. And dudes from Alabama pull out forces. Like, hey, bro, I got the 07 forces, like the mids right here. And our guy pulls out a pair of Under Armour low tops, and he's like, oh, well, I got these. It's, it's not even comparable. It's not even close. And could you imagine that swish in the Stormtroopers? Ooh. Like and not having to see that UA right there, like come on, man. Um, Nike's number one, and and they're going to be number one for a long time. Mm-hmm. And I just think it would work wonders in recruiting, and I think it would also soften the blow with the team right across the state. They're with Nike, so now th- you know they hold it against you. You know that that is a huge thing. Nate Oates and Nick Saban both were like, "Hey, man, they wear Under Armour." Like, it's a joke. All right, it's a joke. They wear Under Armour. Hugh don't like Under Armour. He was at Ole Miss. They wore Nike. <laughs> like, he's a known Nike guy. So, I'm telling you, it it will do wonders in recruiting. When you talk to kids and you go out in public. How many people do you see wearing Under Armour, Dustin? Under the age of 55? Yes. Very little. Very, little. <laughs> very, very little. I can walk you through my closet right now, and there's a reason why I have very little Auburn stuff hanging in my closet. It's because Auburn's sponsored by Under Armour. Hmm. I buy a lot of my Auburn stuff from Home Field or something like that. Or Barnard if I go to the – company. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Barner Supply Company. Link like, in the bio. Uh, Yes, like I just I can't I can't bring myself to buy Under Armour. So I know these seventeen year old kids, they ain't wanting to bring themselves to wear Under Armour. You know what I mean? So, um, I just think Nike's the clear move. Uh, I think it would be a major major success story for Auburn in the recruiting game to be able to go in and say, "Hey, we're with Nike." Uh, the game's changed. Let's get these uniforms right. Let's get this apparel right. Let's get these athletes in some sick gear. Uh, and that's where I sit with Nike to Under Armour. I'm just I'm not that Under Armour guy, Dustin. Yeah, we've been talking a lot about perception 
these last couple of months on this podcast, just kind of the perception that Auburn has out there and kind of zooming out and saying, okay, man, let's get out of our, out of our barn for a second. Let's take our Auburn goggles off and kind of look at how other people and how these recruits view Auburn from the outside. Cause we're blinded by love. I'm not going to apologize for it. I mean, I love my Auburn Tigers, but we do have to be, realistic and have these discussions and as far as the perception thing goes i think that getting to a serious brand like nike and then let me tell you something blake the first thing i thought of when i saw this was i would have bo jackson's ass in jordan hair stadium shooting commercials with bo nose and the new nike jersey so fast dude i would play on that so fast i'd have cam coleman shooting commercials with bo jackson the Shit. first the first day it went bro I mean, it's it's gold. It's gold. And the new generation knows about Bo No because of that thirty for thirty. Like it. Think of how so how that that mark those commercials came out before me and you were born, and we know them. That's that's Nike. Okay, that's how successful they can be marketing, and you can attach that to a superstar like Bo Jackson and tie that into your current guys that are coming up. And the way you can sell Bo Jackson and Cam Coleman, man, Preach. I'm just like. I'm telling you, brother, the, the the possibilities are endless there. And then, like Blake said, on the basketball front, man, apparel is really – what I don't want to get too far into this because it's like a 20-minute conversation we could have, but it matters a lot in basketball recruiting. Yes. It matters a, like a lot more than any other sport. It really, really matters in basketball recruiting, and I think you'll see a big jump when that happens. It, 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 it gives Bruce another tool, man. And then P-Pass asked a really good question. He says that, in the NIL landscape, can't these guys get their own deals? You know, like, I don't know the rules off the top of my head, p Pass, but I would imagine, like, if you're signed at a Nike school, you can't just go off and do Under Armour stuff. Like, I'm sure yeah. there's going to be there's going to be some restrictions. Now, it would be a whole lot easier, right? Like, you're a, you're a Nike school, and now you can do NIL deals with Nike because, like Blake said, is Under Armour really popping on the streets? Are people really no. wearing Under Armour? Like no. how many Under Armour commercials do you see? Like how much of their advertising do you even see? Um, so just the NIL opportunities with Nike compared to Under Armour are vastly different. And I think it would give us a, a big opportunity for athletes. I mean, hell, man, maybe our softball team can get some cleats that don't put blisters on their feet. Who Who's the biggest athlete that Under Armour has? I would say it's Steph Curry. Yeah, 100%. All right. There's a reason why Steph Curry – went to Under Armour and not Nike, and his name's LeBron James. Mm. All right. Kevin Durant. All right. Like, like, it's it's not even close. Right. How many – go into a gym in your hometown, all right, go into a gym where some pickup basketball is being played and point to me how many kids – are wearing Under Armour sneakers on the court. Don't nobody want to wear Under Armour, all right? It, it's clear. It's it's Nike, man. It's Nike. And uh, if if Jordan, if the Jordan deal did come around, uh, it would be a slam dunk for me to go Jordan brand uh, because I think Michael Jordan has taken over the game, and we all know what Jordans do on the basketball side of things. Like, come on. Uh, and it's Tim ha Tim is making the most important point in this argument. <laughs> Booby Miles told y'all, I'm going to knock him out with black, black Nikes on my feet. Okay. He so, gave him the Sharpie. He gave yeah. him the Sharpie. <laughs> my man Comer. My man Comer. Yeah, Color them in, bro. Color don't them nobody man. wear them white. <laughs> Listen, dude. Um, In my uh, opinion, bro, I love Remember the Titans. That is the greatest football movie of all time. Yeah. It's close. It's close. I love him, the Titans, but Friday Night Light takes it for me. Um, listen, Karen, you're the best, and I saw Chris over here as well, gifting out memberships. Yeah. We also had some really good uh, questions in the comments I'm about to get to, but that's, so I wanted to tell you guys, thank you for gifting those memberships out. And, Blake, the recruiting has been heating up. I feel mm -hmm. like we're pretty close to getting some commitments. You see predictions rolling in, and – I tell you, there's a place if I can get all the way over here to it. We got these <laughs> memberships, baby. I'm actually working on one. Uh, worked on one today. Going to drop for you guys in the morning. Got some updates. I've got some predictions of 
of some guys that I think are going to commit and they're going to commit very soon. Um, got some watch of film coming on those guys as well. So a lot, a lot of stuff coming around the corner, man. This is now, this is the time where you want to get in here because we're, we're pumping this recruiting stuff hard. Blake's doing these watch of films for the baseball, uh, getting this game day group chat. Look, we got a good amount of members and over half of y'all are not in the game day group chat and you don't have to be in the game day group chat but what happens in there like i've said before it kind of works as like our message board in the sense of we drop new content we let y'all know that's kind of where you can communicate with us and we can communicate back with you guys so if you are a member um you know do what you got to do to get in that group chat man so you can kind of keep up with everything that we got going on because we've been pretty busy around here man Mm. and like i said that merch game Go over there to Barnard Supply Company. They, they're coming out with fresh new gear every single day. The link is in the bio. Click on that, man. They're good Auburn people. Help them out. Support Auburn people, man. It's all positive vibes. I actually got uh, actually got my Barnard shirt right here. So if you are, look at that, man. There it is. Yes, sir. Clean. And also, I had a, actually... I had a message about the Barnard Supply Company on Twitter today, and I had two messages this weekend about people wanting up-tempo merchandise. Go over to the warportshop.com. You can get you this T-shirt right here. And our guy, Chris, who's in the chat, he uh, he just bought the Drop Your Nuts up-tempo T-shirt. So, listen, <laughs> yeah. man, we got, some, we got some new merch out. So, go over there to the warportshop.com. If you like that Barnard Supply, Go and click that link in the description. And if you're interested in this, you want to stay up to date on this recruiting, you want to get in here and break down this film with us and look at these guys, man, we did offensive linemen last week, Blake, and, and our members loved it. I was a little nervous. I'm like, who's going to want to sit here with me and watch a three-star offensive lineman film? Turns out you guys loved it. So it's yep. a blast, man. Um, I want a big thank you to all our members for supporting us. And if you are interested in that, that's kind of what we're doing over there. We're wearing a lot of hats, man. Basketball, baseball, football, video games. We've been busy over here. Yep. Um, so if you can go over there, man, and join those memberships if you're interested, you will get exclusive content. You'll be a little bit in the know on some of this stuff that's going on, and uh, it'll help support us as well. And we just thank every one of you guys that do. Let me get back over here. I had a good question, Blake. I had a really good question from my guy, man. He says, what true freshman names have popped on the defensive side of the ball? Man said, listen, I've heard it about Cam Coleman. I know, I know. Tell me some defensive guys. Um, Last week, man, I got asked a question. Who I was asked, who do I think was going to be the one true freshman this year that really kind of popped and contributed? And I said Malik blocked him. And then my guy, Brian Matthews, today at Rivals wrote an article talking about how Malik Blockton has been that dude so far as a mm-hmm. true freshman. And um, Hugh mentioned Malik today as well, and then he mentioned T.J. Lindsey. He said with T.J. Lindsey, he Ooh. said, we're trying to figure out what to do. He said, is he going to be that that two spot on the edge or on, that, on the end, excuse me, behind Keldrick? But – can we move him? In? Do we need to move him inside Sorry. because he has that ability? He he has that quick chitch ability. He can kind of generate a pass rush from the interior. They're just trying to figure out what to do with him. I'm saying that's a good thing. You got a guy like that where you're trying to figure out, okay, which way do we go here? My hope is, is that we get a, and Hugh mentioned it again. He said, again, I need two D linemen, interior D linemen out of the portal. He said it today. Gotcha. He said, I need two. Okay. So, I hope that that happens, guys, that we can at least count on to play significant reps because I want to see all those guys on the D-line playing their natural position. I don't – and we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna do a segment here about Keldrick in a second. I don't want to see Keldrick have to slide all the way into the inside. I know he can do it. I know he can be effective there. But I want to see him maximize his skill set in that Marlon Davidson role, not that Derrick Brown role. Like yeah. he's big enough and has the skill set. If we get banged up and the Keldrick has to slide inside, and if the kid keeps growing, I don't know what we're going to do with him, but move him inside. Because every time I see his measurables, he's gotten taller and you know he weighs more. The kids, he's just a beast, and his, his little brother's doing the same thing. Um, but that's just kind of where I'm, I'm going to say Malik Blockton is the name that I've heard consistently that he's popped. Hearing some more noise about Kinsley Faustin starting to come mm. up. Um, trying to think of anybody else that I've heard more than once on the defensive side. Sylvester Smith. Well, Sylvester Smith's not a true freshman; he's a redshirt freshman. So, yeah, Malik. What about Blockton. uh, what about uh, Waller and uh, yes, and yes, yes, 
Yeah. Um, he mentioned Waller today. He mentioned Waller and then um, the kid we flipped from Florida, from North Carolina, Williams. It's either Williams yeah. or Williams when you say his name. Uh, he mentioned them too as well. And I've heard a lot about the North Carolina kid, Williams. So, and then, yeah, I'm glad you said Waller because she was now mentioned Waller twice in the press conferences. And uh, I think Mike G the other day, I think my, I saw where Mike G was said he's hearing some good things about, about Jamonte as well. I initially thought with Jamonte that he would be a year two kind of guy. Um, his tape really pops, but he's just small. Like I'm being honest, you know, and I thought the size was going to kind of be maybe like a thing in year one. I thought maybe he'd have to put on just a little bit more weight, but he knows how to get after the passer. And apparently that's what he's doing. So, and I, and I'll finish with this part, man. Um, you're hearing more about freshmen most days than you do veterans. And I think there's a couple of reasons for that. One, I think that the, the, the guys that we brought in, in the last two classes are just more talented than the other, the upper classmen. Yes. Like that's just what it is. And the rankings bear that out, but it's a mindset. It's a mindset, man. These guys that are coming to Auburn right now have bought into Hugh Freeze's vision. They understand what Auburn is supposed to be. And if Auburn doesn't get back there, it's not going to be because the 2024 class is not putting in the work. I'll Great tell stuff. you that right now. And I feel really confident saying that because I've had multiple people tell me, hey, man, not only is Cam Coleman the best player out there most days, but then afterwards he goes and works out for another hour. You know, I, I was going to say something about that is everybody's talking about the freshmen and uh, the recruiting class and everything. One thing that I think is different is we all saw the, the, the Cam Coleman picture that was posted. And you saw the muscle that he had put on. That's different. That's something I didn't see the past two or three years. I think these guys that have come in, like Dustin said, they've bought in and there's a vision there and they're working their tails off to get Auburn back to where they used to be, and they can be. And if somebody tells you that Auburn can't get back there, they're lying to you, okay? And I think these cats are taking it serious. I think they're busting their tails in the in the uh, weight room. I think they're busting their tails on, on the practice field. And I think they're taking the classroom serious. I think they're taking every part of Auburn University serious. I'll even give a shout-out to Peyton Thorne for getting into the media and being more active in interviews and things like that. I think I think the vibes are different. I think they're different this year. That was one thing that I was calling on him to do. I want to see you I want to see you more vocal. Right. I like Cam Coleman's smile. It electrifies a room when he walks out and he 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 smiles at the camera and says, "Indeed." All right? That lights up a team, man. There ain't none of this, uh, I'm late for workouts, and but I still want to play Saturday because I'm all you got, so I know I'm going to play. Right. You know, uh, that's kind of what we were trying to tell you guys last year is, you know, <laughs> there was there was stuff going on that it just shouldn't have been going on. And Valdo let the world know after we got our doors blown off by Maryland. I think the vibes are truly different. And you can see it. You can see it around these young bucks. Uh, I think they want to make a difference, and I think that's why they all chose Auburn, and they come together as a class and said, we want to be the change. We want to we want to lay the foundation to get Auburn back to what it used to be because you're going to have guys come back, all right? You're going to have the, the, the old ones, all right? They're going to come back. Bo Jackson's going to put time and effort into Auburn University like he always does. Cam Newton. Man, Cam Newton's coming back to watch a 6-6 a six and six football team play against the number one team in the country, and he's in the student section getting hyped up. These dudes care, man. The old cats, they care. And those young ones, I'm telling you, they feed off of it. And so I think as a, as a collective whole, I, I feel like the vibes are completely different. Uh, in year two, is that gonna lead? Is that gonna lead to ten wins? I don't know, but I think it's gonna lead to a better season, where we're not out here 
looking like a clown show six games into the season where we're absolutely lost and we don't know what the world's going on. We're sitting here wondering why we're not running RPO. We're sitting here rotating quarter uh, quarterbacks, playing ring around the rosy uh, in, in the third quarter in a seven-point game with Ole Miss, who was the top 15 team in the country. I think I think it's different this year. I, I think uh, Derek Nix coming over, to me, pure class, all right? Got asked a baited question about leaving Ole Miss and answered it with pure perfection. All right. There was, it, it just seemed to me like somebody was trying to get him to say something, you know, like maybe get a maybe get a little snippet of, hey, why'd you leave Ole Miss, you know? And answered it with just pure class. I, I think him and him and Hugh share the same vision. I think the vibes are just different, Dustin. And I'm excited. I'm excited about Saturday. Even if we don't see what we're thinking that we might see, uh, or you know, it, it's somewhat reminiscent of last year or whatever, I think these kids care, and I think they chose Auburn for a reason. Because I'll be honest with you, I follow Perry Thompson uh, on every social media platform, and every single day I see him on a football field putting in work. Hmm. Every day. Every single day there's a video of Perry putting in work. He's lifting weights. He's running routes. The one thing that he's got to get better at, running routes. He's training, man. He knows he can't be up there Saturday and play in the game, but he's still putting in the work. I think it's different. Yeah, for sure. So, Blake, before we get out of here, our last little segment, like you mentioned it again today, he said, I got to beef up the D-line a little bit. So, I don't think it's crazy, brother, to Mm -hmm. say that in the position that we're most concerned about, Keldrick Falk is the most important player, right? So makes him kind of one of the more important players on the team. And it's a name that throughout spring camp, you hear a lot of about, you know, the young guys coming in and all that. And, I had to inquire about Keldrick the other day. I said, I haven't heard a whole lot about Keldrick other than like he's taking that leadership role. But I want to find out about his camp on the field. Oh, he's been balling. You just don't hear about it because it's expected. So Keldrick Falk goes out there and tears it up all day. At this point, people are just saying, oh, well, that's Keldrick Falk. So – I guess Blake, what what do, what should we expect this sophomore year? Like this next jump has got to be it's got to be pretty big, right? Like we're dependent on Keldrick to be that dude, not only on the field but off the field. I, I think of losing a guy like Marcus Harris in that room, kind of the leader of that room, and then Keldrick stepping into that role. But we need a, a healthy Keldrick Falk, Blake, and we need Keldrick Falk to to reach that maximum potential kind of play at that level that he was playing at the end of last year and really become the player that we know he can become. Cause if he does, then it, it, it really sets his defensive line up and puts us in a good position. You know, last year it took him a couple games to get his feet wet and, and we knew that was going to happen. We knew true freshman coming in. It was going to take him a minute to get comfortable sec speed, physicality. All right. Well, this year, we saw what you did at the end of last year. We need it from game one. We lost Marcus Harris. All right? We need Keldrick Falk smothering quarterbacks. All right? We got to have it. Got to. It's a must. He's got to be the face of that front. Got to stay healthy. I think he can. I think he's going to be a hell of a player all SEC. I think he is going to be one of the faces. Obviously, I know Eugene the face of the defense, the leader, the captain. But I think Keldrick is going to be that guy. And we got to have that dude, man. We got to have that dude that disrupts O-lines around this league. If he can put pressure on opposing quarterbacks, it's a difference. It's going to help our secondary. It's going to help our linebackers. It's going to help our entire defense. Keldrick's got to be that guy. And when I when I see clips of him, that looks like a grown man. Hmm. You look from year one to year two, grown man. So that's what I'm expecting. I'm expecting 
uh, all conference numbers, uh, just a, a step above what he did last year. And uh, I think he's going to hit the ground running game one. I think you're going to see a freak of nature, Dustin. I really do. So last year he had one sack, three and a half tackles for loss. He generated a lot more pressure than that. Yep. But those are the numbers. So I ask you, similar to my Eugene question, Blake, you're a betting man. Yep. Give me over, under, five sacks, ten tackles for loss for our guy, Keldrick Falk, this year. I'm saying I'm saying he's getting over five because if you want to be successful, I think he's the dude. Right. I do. I, I think he's getting over that. I think you're going to see a freak of nature this year. I really do. I, I think this cat's different. And I <laughs> – I say all conference. If Auburn has a hell of a year, it could be more than that. And uh, I, I'm not, I'm not out of the boat of Auburn shocking people and putting up more wins than they're expected. I know we're going to be young, but I think Keldrick Falk is that dude. And I think if he, uh, if he gets over the five and and ten tackles for loss, I think you're going to see a cat. Uh, good luck, and you're going to enjoy him for one more year because he's going to go make a lot of money. So. <laughs> I just think he's that kind of freak of nature. Yeah, absolutely. Keldrick is a beast, man. And when you get guys like that on the line of scrimmage, coming as a true freshman, now coming now that he's a sophomore, you're counting on him to anchor that line. And then you look over there on the offensive line on the other line of scrimmage, and you're saying, man, I got another guy that played a lot as a true freshman in Connor Lou coming back as a sophomore. I'm really counting on him to hold down that center spot, anchor that offensive line. It's exciting. It's exciting. And mm -hmm. I see a lot of y'all in the comments saying, hey, all these young cats, how can we not be excited? You got to be. You got to be patient. It, it comes. It's going to come with patience. But there's going to be talent. There's going to be talent out there Saturday in Jordan Air Stadium that we haven't seen for a little bit on an Auburn team. Maybe end of tub, you know, end of tubs type. Mm -hmm. Well, Gene, Gene brought in some talent. He just couldn't develop it, but he had a couple good classes. But it's been a while, man. It's It's been a while. Um, I always thought that the Gus classes were kind of overrated because, like, those guys just didn't hit. And then Gus kind of loaded up in certain positions and then, like, ignored other positions and made the classes look better than they really were. But what you're going to have out there Saturday, man, Auburn has not seen this collection of guys, this, this amount of blue chips, like, hey, if this guy hits and this guy hits, if this guy hits – and what did, what 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 did I say, Blake? After watching Cam Coleman week one of the high school last year, I said this guy, and he was committed to he was committed to Texas A and M at the time. Yep. And I said this guy right here. I don't I can't see Hugh Freeze letting him leave the backyard. Yep. And I said if he steps onto Auburn's field right now as a senior in high school, he's the Sorry. best receiver on the field. Yep. I think we found that to be true. And it's and, and that's not even like I didn't come up with something crazy there. If you if you ever saw Cam Coleman up close and personal at any point in high school, you said, oh, this is silly. He probably should already be. There's nobody out here that's on this level. This is this is different. You're just like, oh, this is what people were looking at when they saw Mike Evans in high school and Calvin Johnson. And I know there was a guy last week, Blake, that commented in one of our videos and said, we were going to jinx Cam Coleman by hyping him up. Yes. Brother, we're not hyping Cam Coleman up. Cam Coleman's hyping Cam Coleman up. I'm not on here telling lies. Guess who's scoring touchdowns in every single freaking scrimmage we've had in camp? Yep. You want me to, who? I mean, it, it jinxing him. What? Who's the on who's the on three guy? The uh was his name J D Paquel? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh he right. said yeah, he said uh whatever Cam Coleman stock there is, buy it immediately. Yeah. Buy a lot of it. All right. Yeah. He said the kid's a freak of nature. Look, this is why we this is why there's so much hype around Cam Coleman and there's so much uh us wanting him to be great and we think he is going to be great. Go back and think of all the close games that Auburn was in where we just lacked that big physical playmaker down the field. Does anybody remember Penn State? All right. Penn State in Happy Valley. We're down a score. 
Mm. Bo Nix drops back. We throw a 50-50 ball to Shedrick Jackson. Not a knock on Shedrick. That's not his game. All right? It's not his game. Shedrick was a blocker. I think he got better as his time went on at Auburn. But that's not his game. Auburn didn't have any – Auburn didn't have guys. Auburn didn't have guys. And and we want to sit here and, and I think Cam Coleman could be that guy to put you over the top to win games like that. We just didn't have the dudes. I mean, so, yeah, we're going to hype him up. Just like I'm going to hype up Perry Thompson when he gets here because we we saw him live in action – Throw around kids uh, for four quarters while he was at Foley, and they had everybody's like, "This is my favorite one, Dustin." Well, Perry Thompson, he didn't put up a whole lot of numbers. He's really not that good. They, we're glad we didn't. He 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 didn't come to Alabama. All right. Well, we were in attendance, and we got to see how Foley had to use him. They they had a young quarterback. They weren't throwing it all around the yard, folks. They were having to motion Perry into the backfield and let him take handoffs. No, say Perry Thompson's not running the halfback dive at Auburn. So. <laughs> like, like they were literally having to motion motion him into the backfield, all right, and then throw screens to Perry Thompson, and that's how he would get his yards. Very seldom would there be a deep ball thrown to Perry Thompson. Very, very seldom. They were having to run jet sweeps. There was times where he lined up at quarterback and took direct snaps. So, yeah, we're going to hype these cats up because we we haven't seen it at Auburn in a long time. So I think I think these dudes are difference makers. I think the games that we struggled and we were close in that we could have won if we had playmakers, Georgia last year at Jordan-Hare like we always talk about, these dudes are those guys. So they're young, but they're going to have pressure. You're a five-star. You're going to have pressure. Yeah. So everybody who says, oh, you're hyping this kid up, no. On three, two, four, seven rivals, they hype those kids up. They put the stars on them and say, hey, this is this is what they should be when they get to the college level. They get those rankings for a reason, Dustin. Yeah, I mean, go uh, – you were talking about the slant route earlier. If you want to – that Bryce ran. If you want to watch that, go on our shorts. We posted the majority yep. of our clips that, of the games we went to this season, um, watching the guys that were committed and now ultimately on the team. Watch those clips, man. Like watch the Cam Coleman ones. I ain't I ain't overhyping this dude. He's That's the fun. one. He he's the one catching balls three feet across his body, opposite side, last second looking, catching it with two fingers. But he's doing that. What do you want me to say about it? Exactly. Well, I, you, know, you want me to act like I didn't see it, bro? Game one, me and Mike G sit down. Mike G looks at me and says, "We should probably get our phones out just in case he does something." Okay, I'm telling you, literally, they just kicked the damn ball off. It's the opening play. Mike G says, we probably, we're pulling our phones out. Cam Coleman, 80-yard touchdown. I'm trying to get – trying, trying to get there. Yeah. I'm sorry, Cam. I didn't know. I, I, I thought that I could maybe pull my phone out sometime on the – no, sir. Cam Coleman's on the field. I got to have this thing on him at all times because it will pop. He scored four touchdowns. Versus Auburn High, I probably recorded every single one of Cam's reps. There was a false start. I went back real quick to delete the false start out of my gallery. As I was doing that, Cam Coleman bust off a 72-yard touchdown. I'm just like, ain't, ain't nobody Dog. over, ain't nobody over hyping this guy. Okay, Dog. he he's doing it. Cam Coleman is hyping, hyping Cam Coleman. And we'll end with this. I got a Tim the Toolman sailor that says. Cam has that mama mentality, and Tim, I, I I think you did this on purpose because you knew I was gonna find this one, and I was gonna I was gonna love it. Listen, um, Kobe Bryant is my dude, my favorite athlete of all time. When I see some of the stuff that I saw on Twitter after Auburn lost to Yale, not a whole lot of mama mentality, Tim. Not a whole lot of it at all. Um, and. I'm glad that you use that term because that is the way that I view sports. And I was in yep. attendance. It's the craziest thing I've ever seen in sports. I was at a, uh, they were the the Hornets at the time, the New Orleans Hornets. And Kobe was trailing by 28 at halftime. And he came out in the second half and put up 16. And they were down by like 12 going into the fourth quarter. 
And everybody in that building turned to each other and said, I know what's coming next. Guess who put 20 on New Orleans' head in the fourth and hit the last eight, going an 8 0 run with a minute and a half to close the game out? Mm. Kobe, mother Bryant, brother. That mama mm. mentality. And and I, it's, a, it's a great point you make, Tim, because I see it. I see it. A determination to not accept no. You know what the mama mentality is? It's not, well, I got, well, he pushed me first and then I got thrown out because I retaliated. No, that's not Mamba mentality. It's not. And Auburn needs a whole lot of it. And Cam Coleman's got it, brother. Cam Coleman's got it. He's about it. He's the real deal. And on top of all that, I'll say it again. Not only is he motivated to be the best that Cam Coleman can be, but he's also motivated to get his hometown team back to where he thinks it belongs. And it's taken Auburn decades to get a yep. kid from central Phoenix city to believe that. Yeah. And we got it. And, and, and guess what guys, the one that we convinced is the best one to come out of there yet. So Carmelo English, wherever you are, wherever you ended up playing football at brother, wish you the best of luck. But I'll take this one. That's I'll take this one. And you can give me up, Shaw, coming up next. I'll take Kim, too. But very, very good point, Cam. He has it. And if you can get a team, brother, and if you can get a team to buy into Mama mentality in 2024, when just not only are sports in general soft as hell, but the world is. If, mm. you, if you go to your job tomorrow with Mama mentality, you're going to start taking over in a couple of weeks. I mean, the world's not designed like – You'll just thrive, bro. So if we get guys to pursue excellence in the way that Kobe Bryant did, yeah, man. Yeah. And you kind of mm -hmm. got me, you kind of got me reminiscing there, Tim. You you brought up my dog, man. You brought up my boy. Um, but that does get me excited. And it's true, man. It's it really, it really is important. And I think it's really important. It it kind of ties into what Jake Crane talked about, right? Yep. He and, and he didn't say this directly, but if you think about it, he's saying there's not there's a lack of mama mentality right now on the planes, and we got to get it back, Blake. We built the biggest scoreboard in college football, and then forgot how to put points on it, while other people put points on it. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Points are getting put on it, but just not our points. <laughs> it's, it's it's not us. Uh, you got anything before we get out of here, brother? Uh. Yeah, I mean, you really, you really just touched on it with the mama mentality, and um, you know, it, it, uh, there, there's, there's a lot of excitement going into Saturday. I'll say that, and as an Auburn fan, I love Auburn uh, with everything I got. Uh, I got a eight month old son in there that I'm raising to be an Auburn fan. I uh, orange and blue. Uh, love it you know and we've uh we've sucked for for quite some time now i'll put it to you like that we've we've sucked it's not been the auburn standards uh that that we expect i know at least dustin and i on this on this show um i expect auburn to i like to compare them to an lsu style program uh you know every now and then yeah you're acceptable to have a bad year but that next year, you should come back 10 wins, 9 wins. You should be in a big-time bowl game competing against other big-time programs. There should be no more Music City Bowls. There should be no more Birmingham Bowls. I'm okay with going to an Outback Bowl every every, every so often. I'm not mad about it, all right? That's that's not what we're saying. We're, we're just saying that every so often – we need to be in that in that competition. We need to be in that dance, that party. All right. I think that's what we're trying to spread on this show. Is we want that we want that Auburn uh, winning tradition to come back. And when we go up to Auburn in the fall, and we're walking to Jordan Hare Stadium, all right, and we're getting ready for Tiger Walk, and they start putting the barricades out and the crowd. And we're swarming and we're getting pumped up. I wanted to feel like Penn State that day when Harson come down through there. And I actually thought, hey, 
This is the do or die for Auburn football right here. This is Harson's game. We're about to go in here and we're about to wax Penn State. I was completely wrong. All right. But I wanted to get back to that feeling. Right. You know how it felt, Dustin. It felt fired up. Like it felt like Auburn was about to turn the corner and be something. And uh it was just an electric atmosphere. And, you know, thirty minutes later we were just uh in complete shock, you know. So I want it to get back to that. And I, I think when you talk about when you talk about Mamba mentality and, you know, you you put it on the line, man, like dudes out there. They're just some some folks are just soft, and uh, you got to have those dudes that they show up and work every day. They show up and grind no matter what. That's what championship programs are made of. Everybody wants to make fun of Ohio State and and all these all these other Big Ten schools, Michigan and all this. But dog, they show up and grind. They show up and grind every day. They're in the playoffs. They're competing for championships. I. It's it's got to be there. Auburn Auburn shouldn't be going to the Birmingham Bowl and going six and six every year, Dustin. And that's what we want to see Saturday. It starts Saturday at a day. I don't want to hear that it's a, uh, a controlled scrimmage. I, I want us to go out there and show something and uh, and show the conference that we're we're coming back. We're coming back. Uh, if Mizzou can do it, Auburn can do it. All right. Yeah, right. So let's get back there. Now I'm out on that, Dustin. For sure. Brent says Upshaw was next. I sure hope you're right, brother. We'll touch on that in the recruiting video that will drop for you, and Mr. Tomorrow. Blake, I decided let's make the let's make tomorrow's available for everybody. JV varsity, let's say everybody. And Auburn yeah. dad is saying, Dustin, answer your dad. Pops, you you calling me, Pops? You calling me, Pops? <laughs> Look, uh, I wouldn't be on this show if it wasn't for Pops. I didn't get the pick. Okay, Dad said you can pick all your teams. He said I don't care about NFL. You know, mm-hmm. you you like hockey. I don't even know what the hell hockey is, he said. He said, you can do whatever you want to do with baseball. I don't care. He said, but in this house, if you want to sleep under this roof, it's <laughs> War Damn Eagle. So, yes, sir. Auburn dad for life. I have an Auburn dad for life, and that is why you see the passion and the juice that uh me and Blake bring here on the show because I know that Blake mm-hmm. got it from his pops as well and his family, baby, and we really, really do care about these Auburn athletes, man, and we really want to see yes. Auburn be successful. So, look, good crowd tonight. Miss Crotchfeld, we love you. We appreciate you. Stay safe out there. And everybody hit that thumbs up. Garner Supply in the descriptions. A lot of y'all been asking me about – I got a lot of messages this week, Blake, about merchandise, how to find Barner mm-hmm. Supply Company. Somebody hit me up on Twitter today and was like, where is Barner Supply Company? I shot him the link, but, hey, man, look, it's right there. It's right there in the description the below. Bio. Yeah, so, so click on that, man. And uh, like I said, for you members, stay on the lookout. I'm excited about the one I'm doing for you guys tomorrow because, like I said, we got some predictions. We got some updates. Uh, I like some of the things I'm hearing. It'll be a good one. So, War Damn Eagle, smash that like, and we will see you guys later on in the week. We're out of here, baby. War Damn, baby. <laughs>